Sight See the Tarot is a series on my channel through which I take you on a tour of tarot books, spreads, techniques and tips, different decks, and more. Today's video tutorial will be a hands-on workshop, so please watch while you're seated comfortably in front of your reading space with a deck of cards ready to go. You're also going to want pen and paper nearby. A Walk Through the Forest of Souls by Rachel Pollack was first published in 2002 as The Forest of Souls, A Walk Through the Tarot. It has now been re-released in 2023 by Wiser Books. This book takes you on a journey with the tarot beyond how to tell fortunes or card-by-card -card listings of meanings. Instead, let's present big questions to the cards like how do I open my heart or what nourishes the soul and what reading did you, the tarot, give a god to create the universe? How do we utilize the tarot as a means to explore unknown territory, both in ourselves and the world beyond us, in the sacred mysteries and in the riddles of existence? In this installment of Sight See the Tarot, let's walk through one tarot thought exercise found in Pollock's A Walk Through the Forest of Souls. In the chapter, The Tarot Before Creation, we explore the parallel between the tarot and the I Ching Book of Changes, a system of divination that is also said to be the oldest book in the world, yet one that isn't confined to a linear nor confined to four corners, but rather is a circle representative of cycles, much like the tarot, writes Pollack. Let us imagine a tarot existing beyond space-time, which the creator of the universe uses to design the blueprint of our universe. And so the physical existence of our world was designed by a tarot reading. That is the hypothetical. Today, we're going to play with that idea. You may find it helpful to download the accompanying worksheet for this reading exercise. Links in the video description box. You'll also want your favorite tarot deck on hand and ready. If it can be revealed to you what tarot reading provided the creator with the blueprints of the universe with which the creator designed their divine plan and purpose, then we might be able to gain what Rachel Pollack describes as the key of keys and become masters of creation. Imagine that the divine creator has taken the four suits of the minor arcana and set them out to lay the foundation of the four metaphysical corners of the universe, the square to be circled. And then our creator pours spirit essence into the major arcana and it is that spirit essence that causes the universe, physical matter, to come alive. You will now be guided step by step through a 13 card God's reading found in the chapter by the same name from A Walk Through the Forest of Souls. If the creator consulted the tarot to create the cosmos, writes Pollock, how did the cards come out? Can we say to the tarot, show us the reading that God received in order to create the world? Obviously, the question is fanciful, even absurd, but there is an interesting parallel again to the tarot's Chinese sister, the I Ching. That's the card reading you'll be doing today, receiving a mythology, but one that will reveal important truths about the universe and about you. This is a mythology that endows you with what Pollock calls the key of keys. Now let's begin. Shuffle your deck and present this petition to your cards. Show me the design plan and blueprints of creation. Repeat these words after me. Show me the design plan, and blueprints of creation. Keep shuffling your cards, and as you shuffle, visualize the layout plan of the spread you will be drawing the cards into. In a spiral sequence, you will be setting the cards down into a cross, three cards in each of the four directions, and a thirteenth card at the end. Repeat once more. Show me the design plan and blueprints of creation. Draw card one. This is the card of mystery, the first movement from the source. Pause the video here to log your reading. Take down your notes and first impressions. Draw card two. This is what emerges from the depths of that source. 
pull out all your favorite books on the tarot and look up what every book has to say about this card. Gather and reconcile that collective knowledge. Pause the video here and take that journey, that walk through the Forest of Souls. Draw card three. This is the first spirit to ascend from the emergence. Think about the pantheon of gods and goddesses you're familiar with. Which divine personality does your card three embody? Remember that there are no wrong answers. This is about how you specifically and uniquely connect to the various facets of divinity. Draw card four. This is the result from the beginning. Don't be impatient with yourself. The answers should not come easy. It should be taking you some time to think and reflect, to process, to tap into your intuitive knowledge. Before proceeding, consider a big picture overview of this spread of four cards and spot the patterns. Any recurring theme or symbolism emerging here, think numbers, astrology, iconography, color schemes, and even emotional values. Pause the video and take as much time as you need. Draw card five. This card reveals a mystery of physical matter. Take your time to free write. Be patient with yourself. Stay open and receptive to what is coming to you. Draw card six. This is what begins to emerge from that physical matter. Remember to pause the video as needed. This workshop should be a dedicated time for meditative self-reflection and journaling. Draw card seven. This is the halfway point of creation, and this is what expresses creation itself. Don't be afraid to consult the books, to look up card meanings, and to see what passages grab your attention. Integrate Bibliomancy. Draw card eight. This is how creation begins to evolve. Take a pause here to consider the prominent themes and any synchronicities in this second ring or cross of cards. Draw card nine. This is the mystery of what the universe will become where our world is headed. What prophetic download are you receiving? Pay close attention to every psychic signal you're getting. Channel it. Transcribe it. We are now getting into the realm of prophecy and divination to see into the future, to contemplate possibilities. Draw card 10. This is the spiritual emergence to come. If you had to personify this card as a deity, which deity would your card 10 be a calling card for? What powers, what values are associated with this card you see before you? Free write and take note. Draw card 11. This is a future possibility for us to consider. Lean in to your emotions. How does seeing the imagery of these cards make you feel? Write down keywords that express your feelings. Describe the energies you're sensing. Draw card 12. This is what will come to be. Visualize your mind assertively reaching out into the future beyond and pulling back into your present, an artifact of the future, and reconcile that psychic hit with what you see in card 12. Consider what stands out to you about this third and final ring of cards. Final card. Draw card 13. This is our return to divine mystery. This card will hold a double meaning. 
For now, think about what your card 13 is telling you about our return to divine mystery. Remember to pause the video if you need more time and stay patient, stay calm, relaxed, open, and receptive. Now let's reflect on the source. To form the Ouroboros, the serpent swallowing its own tail, the final card 13, in addition to revealing our return to divine mystery at the end of this cycle of life, also signifies some core truth about creation. As above, so below, as within, so without. This card 13 also signifies some core truth about you. At this time, pause the video and reflect on how your card 13 reflects a core truth about who you are and your connection to divine source. To close out this reading, pick up the remaining pile of cards in the deck and cut into three card piles. Flip each pile over so the bottommost card is now facing up. These three cards are your teachers. This triad of divine teachers are like your three primes of internal alchemy. They represent three main spirit guides and the triple energies to invoke as you navigate creation for yourself, as you embody the role of a creator. Survey your reading results. You could easily devote the writing of an entire book to this reading result. Each and every card on your reading table right now is itself a gateway for further pathworking or meditation. Consider your fiction, the mythology behind this spread of cards. This spread represents the cards God drew in order to create this world. Also, the specific layout of cards in answer to this question is exactly the cards you, yes you, need to see to get the answer that you seek. What you see will be different from what I see for the question presented because the cards that I need from the universe to best understand the answer is different from the layout of cards that you need from the universe to best understand the answer. I've scanned in my own handwritten notes, filling out the worksheet, documenting my own reading. Perhaps it might help offer some direction on how you'd want to approach your reading result. To conclude, I'd like to direct you to a YouTube playlist of clips from a 2019 interview and conversation with Rachel Pollack. You'll find the link in the video description box below. For context, the whole conversation was an hour long, though it's never been aired in full before. To close out this video in light of the cultural syncretism that Rachel Pollack talks about in A Walk Through the Forest of Souls, and because this particular clip is sentimental to me, I'd like to share a three-minute clip from that conversation between Rachel and I that didn't make it into the 2019 video series. This little clip that I'm sharing also reveals a glimpse into just how much Rachel meant to me as a mentor meant to us all. Recording started. Okay. okay. Can you see me too? Perfectly. Okay, great. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I hope you're not offended by my saying real Buddhism versus American Buddhism. Not at all. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> American, American, my American Buddhist friends always seem to be so, it's an intellectual, rarefied kind of thing, which I'm sure, you know, Catholicism would be in some Asian countries not what American Catholics experience, you know, same with Judaism, you know. I'm now struck by this incredible idea, and I could never do it. Only some kind of genius syncretist person could do it, which I, I wish I mean you, <laughs> which is do a book about that, a comparison of those different things, you know. So, you know, who do in Chinese folk practices, but also things like, um, you know, the connection of, say, you know, the merging of say, you know, Chinese traditional religion and Taoism and Buddhism and even Confucianism compared to Afro-American, um, you know, Santeria and Vodun. I think it would be an amazing book, you know, to compare those two things. So how these different syncretistic traditions, you know, East and West compared to each other. Here's a great example. There's a man, Ivo Dominguez, who writes a lot about I Latin know, yes. American. Yes, I know. Yeah. And so at... Um, 
And Theokon, he gave this lecture once about divine possession. And he said this really important thing. He said, um, if you look throughout the world at world cultures, divine possession is far, far, far more common than demonic possession. Yes. You know, so he talked about, you know, African divine possession, um, Asian divine possession, demonic divine possession, and so on and so on, you know? Um, so I think there's a lot, but I think specifically that whole idea of syncretism without saying, you know, the Chinese is like the um, Haitian, you know, because obviously it's not, they're very distinct. But, but then you can say, you know, yeah, but they're both doing something still, but here's how they're doing it in their own special way. And I would love to read that. And I would actually like to be a part of it in terms of just conversations now and then, if you were going to do it. Yeah. I think it'd be wonderful to have these kinds of conversations now and then about stuff like that, you know? I would love that. I would absolutely yeah. love that. And in general, I just think it's great to have conversations with you now and then. Because I think, you know, I just get so much from talking with you. And I hope that you do too, you know? I feel like I get more. I think I, I'm, I'm the one getting the better deal. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. No, you're so modest, you know? It's like... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. 